earlier we were talking, Paul, and you were lamenting the fact that when you go to a lot of steel guitar conventions, that uh, a lot of the players are older. And one of the things that seems to be a, a, a passion for you is trying to, you know, uh, reach others about the steel guitar and about yeah. what a great instrument it is. So one of the things you've done is you have a steel guitar method. It's an online video series. Tell us a bit more about that. Okay. Um, well, th thanks for bringing that up. Um, yeah, you know, I, I, I think the, 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 the older community and the instrument, you know, like the guys that build the instruments, mm -hmm. you know, who's going to, you know, carry the baton right. into the future. Um, I, I used to uh, go out and occasionally, uh, when I first got off the road and tried to do the studio thing, I also went on the road with Jeff Newman, who was one of the, was the foremost instructor at the time, and I did week-long classes. And he and I would talk a lot about this and would say, you know, I'd say, well, Jeff, you know, can I go? He said, no, you can't go there. And I'd say, why? He said, because you only got a week. You know, he said, so you got to, he said, you just skim over everything. You can't get in, into a lot of depth. Okay. Yeah. Okay. And he and I, the last uh, long trip that I went with him, we went over to Norway and uh, did a clinic in London. And then we went on to do a country music festival in the middle of Norway and, and a few classes and, Anyway, coming back, uh, we talked about the steel guitar had just, uh, there were a few little, the AOL had a little area for steel players, and we were talking about the, uh, you know, the gathering and people, maybe what would that lead to? And, and we were talking about, you know, it'd be great if you, Jeff had already given up on the class thing. You know, it frustrated him. Mm -hmm. And uh, because, and he started doing one on one. He figured, well, maybe I can help somebody in a crash course. They come to my house for a day or two. He called it the Top Gun School. Same thing. But even at that, you got to, it's like getting private lessons from somebody. You can get 10 right. private lessons. You, you, you're just scratching the surface. Yeah. You can't get depth. And so uh, that bothered me. And I've talked throughout the years through DVDs, CDs, I mean, uh, cassettes. And it's like you can, you know, it's like you, you just skim, you know, and you, you don't get the feedback from the student. So uh, Modern Music Masters approached me with, uh, I'd been approached before, but uh, I didn't want to do it, but this felt right. And they said, if you could teach the steel guitar, what, you know, we had a long talk about it. And I said, well, this is what needs to happen. Uh, going back, there was an Oahu method. Now imagine this. The reason why there are so many, look at how many brands of lap steels there are. There's as many as guitars. And you go, well, where's the market for all this? Mm -hmm. And But why that worked was what advanced that instrument was, first of all, the fascination with Hawaii. It was going to be our new state. Mm -hmm. We were having commercial hits, Harbor Lights and Coconut Grove instrumentals were right. going to number one. And then you had this company, Oahu, publishing or whatever, and and they taught uh, this method. It, it was a complete method. Two of the greatest, arguably the greatest uh, traditionalists, and, and I call them the most modern, the first modern players, uh, Lloyd Green and Buddy Emmons, were in their house and knock on the door, and uh, a salesman came by and said, is there anybody, you think anybody in the house would like to learn to play lap steel? Wow. They had... <laughs> Check this out. I mean, this is hard to imagine, but the and and they were like in uh, you know small towns. It wasn't big town. You know, Lloyd was in in uh, Alabama, I believe, and and uh, Buddy was in Indi Indiana when it happened. And uh, so and then you would subscribe, and then you'd have the teacher that would come, whatever that period was, whether it's once a week or that, and then the publication would send you your lessons. Right. Like a it's mail order. Uh, college yeah so that's why all when you listen to all the great lap steel players man they all had this you know like you know they had this slant the, the slanting and, of the ball and, and, and yeah. yes you know they could do all that mm -hmm. and and so could buddy emmons and lloyd because they learned the way i did i learned the same way Right. I learned from a, a teacher who had mastered that. She played like Jerry Bird, Wanda Bruning. Now, what happened when pedals came out, okay, there was a record of Bud Isaac. Pedals were around in the 30s, I believe. But 
but that uh, when the that Oahu period where steel guitar became so popular, they just put, well, we need another tuning because you can't play this chord, you can't play that chord. Right. So they were coming up with tunings and then the next came three, there, I believe there was a, like a five neck, but I mean, you're playing like this. Right. You know, it's just not feasible. Mm -hmm. And then there was even one steel that was put on like an oct uh, octagon shape, you know, where you just dial it and turn it oh, over. And turn it <laughs> yeah. over to a different I've neck. seen all kinds of things. I forget which is the first pedal steel, but anyway, they came with it and the idea was to hold a pedal that would mm -hmm. change your tuning. Right. And so that's all they did. They hold, they'd help those guys that pl chose those, mm -hmm. still playing it like this with the slanted bars. Right. But then uh, Bud Isaacs played mm -hmm. on slowly. Right. It was the first pedal lick. Everybody went, what in the world is that? Right. And that led to the, you know, today's pedal steel. The bad consequence of that is guys got their pedals. Mm -hmm. They, they no, no longer had to do You, uh, you can't, actually can't do that because it's too hard. But, but yeah. they, they weren't they weren't learning how to do the slants anymore. It's like, right. I got a pedal. Yeah. Let's put on another pedal. And right. so the bar technique went away. Yeah. They once they think, most guys think, oh, I'm, I, I have a clean sound, so I know all there is to do with the bar. Mm -hmm. And that's, you know, I've worked on my bar hand I'm 64, I've been playing 56 years. So, uh, and I've been working on bar. Yeah. I'll work on it next week, because that's that's my expression. I mean, that's my soul, that's my heart, that's how I get all of that out. And, and just m the more control I've got, and right. also the touch. But this went away. They yeah. got a pedal, so they're just, they're just moving yeah. it from, and they don't even move it straight anymore. Yeah, I I remember seeing uh, Buddy play with Albert Lee on a Windows on the Cumberland, and it was the first time I had ever seen a pedal steel player stop using the pedals and started using the bar oh, slanted. Yeah. I'd never seen that before, and seeing Buddy do that was eye opening. And then yeah. seeing you do it with the with the time jumpers, especially on Together Again, yeah. you would really <laughs> utilize the. Uh, you know the. Would you play just a little bit of that of that style of where where you're you know kind of slanting the bar and so. Yes, I would. Sorry. Yeah. I had to think. <laughs> For yeah. things like that, it, yeah. it creates tension. You're not really <laughs> landing here. You're just yeah. going through it, but you can hear the difference in. You know, it's just yeah. It's the uh, the tension release thing. Yeah, and and slants are are. That you can do that with it. Doesn't yeah. sound the same. No, it doesn't. Not at all. And 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 so, uh, my frustration is is uh, I'm the uh, I'm the next generation after Lloyd, mm -hmm. and Lloyd's still f so fortunate uh, to be with us. But Buddy and Chalker, all the, right. the legends from that period that learned through the Wahoo or, right. or learned the skills of the earliest, like the Saul Hoopies and Joaquin Murphy and Bob Dunn, they learned all the stuff right. that they were doing. Those guys are gone. Yeah. And, and, it, and I thought about how the instruments, I've been blessed with where, where I've been able to go with this instrument. And I've seen things and I could... Uh, I, I don't. I don't want to paint myself as this Mr. Good Guy, but I, I love the instrument, and it's like if I don't do this, and I have the luckily uh, this this opportunity came, and I thought this is the way to do it. You know, you can stream, and I can actually through a tuition make make the guys at least give me a year, mm -hmm. and let me change your way of thinking, because I can save you time, and because I know where I screwed up. Mm -hmm. I assumed so many things because I thought, well, who wouldn't think about it? It's a piano you learn through scales. Steel guitar, you, you know, you should learn through scales. Or guitar, saxophone, you learn through scales. Right. But that's because you learn the complete instrument. Mm -hmm. But let me just show you something. Uh, with the steel guitar, that's not true. Yeah. And I was sitting there, like, uh, just a major scale. There's no... There's no, there's yeah. no whole tone raise, so I've got to do it. And imagine playing uh, a pattern like so. If you got, it's just 
That's tough. That's a lot that's, of jumping that's, around. That's just, it. it's impossible. And, yeah. it's, and especially if you're in a band and yeah. the guitar player goes, you can't double him. He says, well, double me or give me, yeah. give, give me the harmony. And that's just a major scale. Mm -hmm. Now, so what you end up doing on steel, there is another position where you can play that and you, know, you can go. You can play it faster there. Right. But I can't play it through. Watch this. Uh, I don't even think scales. I, I never play patterns. I don't. Yeah. I hate playing musically. Yeah. I I I don't want to play patterns. But but anyway, look at the jump I had to make. Right. Right there. So all that that ocean there. Yeah. Of worthwhile information didn't get learned. So I wasted learning the modes and 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 uh, you know harmonic minor and all that stuff. That's you, you need to learn, know what they are, mm -hmm. you know. But I found that I had to relearn everything uh, and view uh, the way I viewed the instrument because it's a triadic tuning. So then I started thinking, okay, well, when I listen to, uh, like, there's a line, like I'll show you like this. So, so. Now, when you play that, you think that's a scale. Mm -hmm. And it's, uh, that's all I'm playing. That's, mm -hmm. that's the intervallic, it's, it's triadic. You know, so, yeah. but you play that fast and, and that's what Charlie Parker, that's what, uh, that's what Chick, when a friend of mine who played really great jazz and I was in my scale modes, mm -hmm. you know, so I, when I was playing, I was going to, I was playing, well, that's not as much scale, but like, a, a, you know, I was playing like that. And he, he said, you know, he said, and I'll never forget this. He said, he said, uh, when you play scales, he said, that's like a drummer playing Wipeout for a drum solo. Wow. And I thought, oh my God. And I, cause that, that, that hurt. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but he said what he was saying to me was saying, but he was he didn't mean it. He was saying, okay, you know, sometimes somebody has to throw water in your face for you to see the vision. Right. You know, wake up. Yeah. And and so because I he knew I wanted to play jazz. And then he started pointing out, listen to what like, you know, like uh uh you know that that's all that's Triadic. Right. You know, that's I got a match by Chick Corea. So he started pointing out how uh, that song wasn't about, but, uh, you know, written at the time, but early on that that's what they were doing. And he said, and use approach notes. He said, learn what the scales are. Mm -hmm. And he said, but first learn where everything is. Learn where your majors and your minors are. And I said, well, what about the other ones? He said, no, they're just upper extensions. Yeah. He said, first learn where you that and learn. And then I saw this uh, thing on Joe Pass. And I believe Joe DiOrio might have a book where it talks about just viewing chords as major and minor. Yeah. And then everything's uh, put, added to that. And once you view it that way, and so that's the way I'm teach. I'm trying to teach these guys because still you'll see it. Guys really want to, the thing that's been the most heartwarming in doing this is the responses from players is they really, guys want to be classical players. They want to be jazz players. They want to be rock players. They want to write their own music. Mm -hmm. And and they, they want to know the quickest way to do it. And the quickest way is to learn learn your tuning the way it is. And then and then add the scales because to play music, and, and I believe this with, the, you know, is this, I, I guess you could say it's subjective, but I, I think there's more people in this camp than there are in the other camp. People don't want to hear scales because once you start a scale pattern, whether you're learning the melodic minor or you're playing diminished, you're everybody's playing the same patterns. Right. And so, okay, that's like everybody using the same exact words to express their heart. Mm -hmm. You're not really expressing your heart. You just right. and, and and so uh, you you want to get away from that. So if you become if you find chordal knowledge. Right. 
and and where it all lays on your instrument, and then you enhance it on the steel. You have that's the way you really do have to learn it. And the, and the, uh, the weird thing was, I was I told you, Buddy Emmons is my favorite player. Mm -hmm. So I used to listen to Buddy, and because I was, uh, I could play. You know, I learned by my ears, you know, how to play his solos, but I never thought about it. Was and I just assumed because I'd ask Buddy when I'd see him, you know. Hey, what's a pentatonic scale? And he'd say, "Well, it's this, this." And I assumed that he studied scales. As I got to know him, no, <laughs> he knew yeah. what they were. Right. But that was an after fact. But Buddy was playing like you know his some of his uh, uh, lines are like. <laughs> You know, uh, uh, that's a chord. Yeah, yeah. So, in, in, again, to kind of, you know, kind of try to make sure that we understand, it's instead of playing the scales over the changes, it's playing chordal tones and maybe some approach notes and and extensions. That's yes. that's it. it yeah. It's exactly, and and that's uh, you know, there's a, a I know you know Jerry Braganzi. The yes. great saxophonist, you know, I, I've got I, I got his DVDs, his videos, and it was comforting that okay, I kind of came to this on my own with that friend kind of saying you don't want to play scales, and then I started just kind of analyzing it myself, and as I started looking at Buddy Evans playing, I go, oh my God, that's all that's what he's doing, right? And then he's moving his bar around and approaching things, and that's where all those cool lines are coming from. Yeah. And, and, and that's where Charlie Parker. Yeah. That's where everybody is. And your your lines sound much more interesting when it's based on chordal tones instead of playing a scale. Yeah, and it's less predictable. Yeah, you know, because because again, like if you if you approach the instrument from learning scales, then you're going to run the same patterns. <laughs> right, and you end up playing the same kind of intervals, and you know, you end up playing you know whole tones or something like that instead of playing you know thirds or fifths yeah. or things like that, wider intervals. Let me show you yeah. a cool thing because this is this is really because you mentioned whole tones. Yeah. So so like in in the course, you know, I, I teach what that is and it's important. There's basically only two whole tones, and then there's the next. So there's the next, next, and that's it. That's all the whole tone notes are, and everything yeah. else is repeating that. So, uh, and you'll guys up on the steel, they'll play this, you know, and they're not really saying anything. Yeah. I mean, uh, and I'm not putting. I don't mean to be putting down anybody, but listen to Buddy Emmons interpret that right. from an intervallic point of view. Yeah. Well, what would so, he do? Okay, this is one of Buddy's licks. It's going from a uh, uh, one to a four, which you'd use, it, you would use that, and you go, that's, that's that chord. Right. Mm -hmm. See, that's intervallic, because, because all he's doing, okay, remember that what I just explained, right. every other fret is a whole tone, uh, so, if you just do it ascending, I mean descending, and then you're in your four chord. So, buddy takes up a, a shape, mm -hmm. and that's what I teach too. I'm trying to get everybody <laughs> into viewing it this way, but that's a shape. Mm -hmm. So now he chooses that's that chord. Then he takes the augmented, and then he leaves it here and resolves it. Yeah. And now that's music. Yeah. And that and we all sit there and go, God, where does Buddy get this stuff? <laughs> Chords. <laughs> yeah, it's just well, it's 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 a different approach. Right. He's not approaching, you know, I'm not approaching it. Maurice Anderson didn't approach it by scales. He and I talked a long time and and the guys I admire, admired, uh, Tommy White, uh, you know, today's players. They learn this, but it's and so back to the Wahoo method. That was the last method we had. Then we had a uh, there was a, a book that came out uh, in 40 years ago or whatever, which in the 70s, and but techniques advanced, and 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 there, uh, everything that's been taught up to this point because of the technology, you had to just say, hey, there's palm blocking, mm -hmm. there's pick blocking. Well, you can allude to it, but you can't be extensive on, on by streaming, and that's why I, I really got into this, is 
I can sit and, and we have like a lounge, a, f a private Facebook page where everybody can ask questions and I participate every day there. And they can say, hey, what about this? And so I can answer the question. I can put up a video right. uh, there and just say, hey, you know, it's this. Or, But the thing is, there's great players in there. Sometimes they answer it before I get a chance to. Yeah. And everybody, it's like, it's, a, it's like after you go to your college course and then you guys meet at the bar or wherever you meet and you talk about the day's lessons. That's when all of it gets applied. Mm -hmm. And that's never been able to happen before. And that's that's the thing I'm most excited about. But but the great thing is that I can just keep on, if it's not covered enough, eventually, you know, give me another couple of years and I'm gonna have every possible question that I can perceive, you know, that about anything and we'll just keep on doing it. Incrementally, it's gonna be a library of just things. That just, you wanna know everything that I know about bar technique, then it's there. Yeah. And I, you know, if you, and then if you can teach me something, please do, because I want to know, <laughs> you know, because I look at myself as an, uh, I'm an eternal student. Yeah. You know, and I, and I think once you can get uh, established that, you know, you're never going to, the more you learn about music, it's, it, I love Mark's quote, the more I learn, the more it dwarfs me. <laughs> yeah. Excellent. So here's the big question, Paul. Let's say I want to learn how to play the pedal steel guitar. I've never, you know, never, you know, hardly ever even seen one, but yet I'm interested in it. How does one go about all of a sudden learning how to play the pedal steel? I mean, even the mechanics of like getting a pedal steel. I mean, what do you look for? How, how do you how do you start doing this? Well, that and that's um, and to get back to one of the reasons why I wanted to do the course is I took two years. We 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 started right from there. Yeah. Okay. How do you bend the picks? How do you, you know, all the things, what types of picks? Right. And I'm a firm believer that there's no absolute, mm -hmm. no matter if you play guitar, you know, think about right. the guys that play with a straight pick. Jerry Reed didn't. It took him a long, he learned to play with a straight pick, you know, as a pro when he's doing Smokey and the Bandit, he decided right. to learn to play with a straight pick. He could, never could do it. He yeah. said, I've got to do it. So, but think about, he learned with his fingers. So you can't really uh, say one size fits all. Right. So what I did was I made the student aware of, and I always preface it with, here's what's out there. Here's mm -hmm. how you do it. And I, I, I stress, and you know, because some people bend the picks up against like really sharp, some do them straight out. Mm -hmm. And I stress the point, it all depends on the angle of where you hit the, the string. Mm -hmm. And then that's how you shape your blade. So, I right. mean, that's to give you an idea. But yeah. then I show everything, every little nuance and how to use the bar. Yeah. And, and, and it's all there, you know, and, and, it's, and it's explained, uh, hopefully, in a, in a way that puts them at ease. Because, uh, I mean, it's, this is one of the, arguably one of the most complex instruments to learn. Because essentially, you're playing a guitar with one finger. Now, think about that. Mm -hmm. Okay. Yeah. Uh, to to get everything a guitar you can you can uh, move one single string, at least if you, depending on your stretch. But everybody can get five frets. Mm -hmm. So if you moved a, a, st a string five frets on a steel, and you got ten strings, that would take fifty pedals. <laughs> yeah, and and we don't have fifty pedals. So yeah. you know it's just to do that. So you immediately it, you you see limitations in what the instrument do and that's also its strengths mm -hmm. you know that's why it's not tuned in fourths like a guitar right and and all those things you know we had to tune more triadic but anyway all of that's explained the tuning how to tune how to set up a basic steel we just uh, yeah. did a we completed our beginning i think we have the most extensive beginner uh thing we're getting ready to release as a separate package so that a guy you know because we need cheap student model guitars, right. which are, are being made. Uh, there are great manufacturers, Jackson, Stage One. There, there's uh, uh, Mullen has a guitar, an inexpensive guitar. You know, from the you know this guitar is expensive, and right. uh, so you don't have to start there. 
you can get your feet wet. Yeah. And and now there'll be uh, uh, this complete course that has um, literally everything. I, I even teach. Uh, there's some I've met guitar players that played very well with a straight pick and no finger picks. You know, who's to say you can't play the steel guitar like that? I play on sessions like this. Why can't you don't have yeah. to use picks? Yeah. So if they're awkward for you, and you know, you know, and and you struggle with it, stop struggling. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> yeah. If you're a guitar player, it you know, somebody needs to tell you that. And right. and I and I personally think that if someone from my level says it's all right, it helps. Yeah. Because it's like, you know, you just want to know, I'm not gonna mess myself up, am I? Yeah. You know, and that you just everybody needs confirmation. So I'm really careful in the way that I teach, you know. And and I also say at some point it's still good. Have a set of picks at home and put them on and just keep on trying it. And mm -hmm. you may decide, like I have one friend that played with a straight pick and he finally, he never stopped with the straight pick, but he finally put finger picks here. Right. And he played at a high level. I mean, you know, mm -hmm. great jazz player, everything. And, um, and so anyway, that's, that's my theory. So I've, yeah. I've, you know, and I'm still, you know, I've taught, I think, every possible way there is to chime. <laughs> so you can, you know, you can uh, figure out what's best. And, and, and that's all you got to do is you sit there and watch the video. Right. And you go, oh, that's, that's too awkward. Because we're all, yeah. our physicality, you know, we're all different. This, this might, if you, or if you've got arthritis, you're an older guy. And, you know, that might be hard. So maybe you want to just chime with your fingernail. Or, mm -hmm. you know, as long as you know all the options or the palm or your hand. Right. You know, and that's that's all I'm doing is 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 presenting every possibility, and then and then showing you how they work. And I think by having something to learn all the time, it keeps you from getting in a rut. You know, you, like when I was taking lessons every week from a personal teacher, you know, you got to wait. Okay, I got to wait till next Monday to get inspired. So right. there's a long gap. I can become very frustrated. Yeah. So right. with that, that's what I love about the streaming thing because yeah. it's like it's instant. Right. You can, you know, when you're ready to move on to the next lesson. Yeah. Or when it. you're driving your car stuck in traffic and it's like, oh, man, hey, I'm going to put on my lesson. Let, let me listen to this. So yeah. you're, you can triple <laughs> your learning process. Yeah. So the instrument itself. So let's say, you know, you're a guitar player and all of a sudden you want to buy, you know, a beginner steel. What do you look for in a beginner, you know, steel guitar? You know? Oh. Well, uh, you, you want... 10 strings, do not start, yeah. you know. Now here's a, here's a, a, a myth, and I think it's a mistake guys make. Yeah. Um, if you can afford it, mm -hmm. buy an, an expensive guitar. Okay. It's like, uh, buy a 57 Strat. Yeah. <laughs> if you can afford it, <laughs> buy one, because you're gonna get your money back, Right. you know. And same thing's true with steel. Yeah. But if you get a student model, you got the only one that's, person's gonna buy that back is another student. Right. Okay, so, but there's always plenty of those. So you're not yeah. going to lose money even at that. Yeah. But but you want a 10 string. You want to start with a complete E9th mm -hmm. tuning. And that, and I say E9th, but if you're not, you have no interest in playing commercial music, you know, all this kind of stuff. All that basic stuff like, mm -hmm. uh, then get a C6 or, or a, uh, there's also a universal tuning that's kind of a hybrid between the two tunings. Right. And uh, some guys go that way. But but uh, I, I recommend just really, I would start with the E9th mm -hmm. because that's, uh, you can play jazz on it. You can play, um, you know, it's all intervals anyway. Right. <laughs> Diminished scales on here, uh, you know, harmonic minor, all the, the mm -hmm. uh, uh, poly chords, you know, you can play 11 chords. And as you learn, you can uh, say, oh, if I had this pedal. You know, once you learn the, uh, my Hawaiian teacher taught me this. Mm -hmm. uh, uh, we were or we ordered a pedal steel. I was eight. And uh, and we told her. We, and she said, well, I don't know pedals. And she said, I'm going to teach him how to teach himself. And so that's what I'm teaching in this course. Okay. I'm, I'm trying, if you, and that's what I'll get you as a beginner. You're going to learn where the intervals are. You're going to learn how to think of them. And then all of a sudden you go, I need a flat five. Yeah. Okay. So this, that's the only place I can put a flat five. Yeah. Or, or uh, I've got those, but I want more. Yeah. Then you, and then you go, well, you, 
thinking, Lord, I'll warn my bees. <laughs> and that's what Buddy Emmons chose to do. He added that one to the equation, which that's not his stock a change, but right. it's great. And it, it kind of completes. Uh, you've got one in every position. Right. And and uh, so, and and but the student can see that. But you start with a 10 string, three pedals, or four. A lot of them come with four pedals now. Okay. And uh, four knee levers. Yeah. And the knee levers mainly lower and the foot pedals raise. No. 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 The knee levers uh, can do whatever you, you want to, but okay. this is the typical setup. Uh, one, this knee lever raises. Okay. Both E's. Okay. This lowers. Okay. Both E's. This. Yeah. So, and that lowers the second and the nine, and one, the second, a half, and a whole. And uh, then this one, I raise both F sharps, mm -hmm. and I raise the second string so that I can get wow. so I can get up in the pedals down position a yeah. major nine which in you know country pop and all that that's a was a, especially it comes in and out of vogue but it's always a popular chord right and and you can get up and then you can get those kind of you know, You know, you yeah. get all those you know, close you get, voices. Yeah, very, yeah. Or, so you can play jazz on this thing, this which yeah. it's not known for. The, yeah. uh, I apologize for the tuning, but anyway. Uh, so basically, if you get just what I I told you, right. you there's a, you you can spend your lifetime. I mean, yeah. Lloyd Green only has four knee levers and three pedals. Right, and he <laughs> arguably uh, knows this tuning better than anybody. Yeah, and you know, but he uses slants. You know, he he'll do, and you think he's learned, mm -hmm. but it he just finds it a different way, and he'll do it with slants. And you know, he's a sheer genius at all that stuff. Uh, it's I call it slide of hand or slide of bar. Yeah. <laughs> he fools you. <laughs> but yeah, some quick gear questions. Yeah. So first off, you have a little Walter signature model amp. Yeah. So yeah. T tell us a little bit about that. This is a little Walter is a boutique uh, amp, uh, which I fell in love with. I, I originally used the fifty watt amp, mm -hmm. and uh, which is his and it had a volume. And tone, and I loved it. And then he combined two amps together, and uh, because Vince Gill was who turned me on to the amp, and Reggie Young, they were using it. And um, we, the more we talked about what steel guitars needs, we had to combine two amps in one head, which is really heavy. Mm -hmm. So he he's a tinkerer. So he we found this is an eighty nine watt. <laughs> Amp, but it's the most wattage that you can you can have and get clean enough, you know. For pedal uh, steel, I don't want crystal clean, you know, mm -hmm. because that's that's what you can get through transistors. And when I listen to all the old records, I wanted, you know, there's hair on it. That you know, together again was played on a basement Fender basement, which the steel would break up mm -hmm. easily. And uh, but that's what makes it that sizzle on the highs, velvety highs. I always call it. Anyway, so. We came up with uh, 89 watts, you know, and, and you know, some people would rate it as 100, you know, and, and he could, right. but, but anyway, and, and he gave me some uh, tone controls, you know, which uh, I've got two volumes, uh, there's two, two channels, essentially. Uh, you can go in, there's two, these are the two volume controls. This is your treble, I've got it turned off for this right at the moment. And then this is your uh, mids, bass, and presence like a traditional steel amp, no reverb in it. And so I use, that leads me to the, um, uh, I kind of endorse this. I helped, Sage was making these, uh, Sage Bonato was making these for guitar players. And I talked to him, I said, you know, there's a steel guitar market out there too. Mm -hmm. And so he was kind enough to uh, consider my request. And so he's got like, a, in this particular model, there's a, a reverb, a delay, and uh, like a, an overdrive, you know, and it's very, it's high end stuff. It's, and it's all hardwired, so you don't have to use a cable. So, you know, it's, right. uh, it sounds good. 
And uh, this is a little Walter uh, speaker cabinet. And uh, I connected with the Eminence folks uh, because uh, as I researched more about old records, I love the sound of vintage stuff, you know, mm -hmm. again, getting back to together again. And I realized that the sound that I loved, even before Buddy Emmons started playing 15s, they recorded, a lot of that stuff was recorded with 12-inch speakers. Okay. 15s came in to be because uh, country music's artists didn't have their own sound and lights. So you had to have an amp loud enough that as they started playing bigger venues, the 15 came into vogue because you could mm -hmm. get a transistor amp and play louder. Right. And, but it's not necessarily the best for tone. We just yeah. got used to that. So I wanted to go back to this. So I, I uh, talked with the folks at Eminence and, and we took about a year going back and forth and then they came up with this formula. And because uh, let me just show you what it'll do. Uh, I can go down to this note. Now, if I set that on with a, where it, you want those to have enough highs, but when you get real high, still smooth. Right. It's not, it doesn't, I don't have to reset my amp. If I know I'm going to play in the studio with other speakers, I would have to uh, reset the amp. If I knew this is the register I was, I'd have to back the highs down so that right. they sounded that way. Right. Now I've just got an all-encompassing speaker and yeah. it's and it's clean and it's just a I, I always call it it's full frequency full full response sonically and it doesn't hype the low end or the the top end it's just no. it gives you what your guitar has <laughs> so i guess it has a pretty high wattage rating on it uh yes it does it's 350 watts wow yeah so is it a is it a heavy speaker? I mean, is that like a big? It, it is a heavy yeah. speaker, and you know, and let me let me just tell you this: uh, my primary thing is the studio, as you know, and uh, the, all the lightweight speakers, which are great, but they never do translate into the studio world. Okay. Okay, and uh, uh, because you know, like the, when you reproduce a sound, it's got to have that big magnet. It really does. Right. You want to have enough headroom so that you know you're still going to get clipping. Mm -hmm. You know, and distortion, but it's a good distortion, and you have to you don't get it before you want it, right? Essentially, and that's that's what, the same with this speaker. It'll break up, but it's it does it in a good way. A lot of people may not know this, but the steel's like putting a sine wave through a speaker. You know, we I can be in the studio like if they'll have Genelec speakers or whatever, and uh, and they run through everything, and then I'll be overdubbing, and they'll say we're getting distortion. And then I'll say, well, can you change speakers? You know, after, after I realize everything I've got, they'll keep on mm -hmm. looking at it. It's got to be my fault, you know, right. that, that scenario. And then uh, after we did, we suss out that everything I have is clean, mm -hmm. and then we realize, let's change speakers, and, it, and it'll typically point out which, oh, this speaker's fatigued. Right. You know, and, you know, just from listening loud, but it doesn't right. show up until you put a real sine wave through it. And these, uh, uh, I remember... Um, uh, Hollis Calvert at PV told me that's how when they first started building speakers, that's how they tested their speakers is with a steel guitar because if it can handle this, it can handle anything. Well, Paul, I really appreciate you being on the show. Thank you. Yes, uh, it was a, 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 an honor and a pleasure. Well, it's great. I, I appreciate what you're doing for music. You know, it's like uh, somebody's got to spread the word. <laughs> yeah. Well, thank you. Thank you.